system in place with a proper folder structure is critical when it comes to effectively managing email. In addition to that, there are a number of things you can further do to optimize the way you manage your email. In this video, you will learn how to use search folders, rules, and how to eliminate email distractions altogether. Most of us have more than one email account. In addition to my work email, I have a personal email account that I use for communication with the family and friends. I access this account via the website Outlook.com. I also have a business Gmail account that we use for our YouTube channel that I access through Google's Gmail site. Having to switch between different email web interfaces is very time consuming. To remediate this, you can add multiple email accounts to Outlook. Hi, I'm so sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to let you know that if you're annoyed by the ads in this video, you can access our tutorials ad-free by getting a subscription to businessproductivity.com or signing up for one of our many courses on platforms such as Udemy, CyberU, and Vimeo On Demand. I also wanted to take this opportunity to tell you a bit more about Storials. Storials, which stands for Story-Based Tutorials, is our video package offering for organizations that want to increase employee productivity using Office 365. With Storials, organizations can inspire, motivate, and educate users on effective use of Office 365 by showcasing real-life best practices. Finally, I want to encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channels, Business Productivity and Storials. Here you will also find my video blog, Succeed in the Digital Workplace, as well as other videos that can help you increase your productivity. If you have any questions or comments, please post them here and I'll do my very best to get back to you. With that, let's go back to the tutorial. Thank you for watching. To add an additional account, go to the File tab and click Add Account. First, I'll enter the details of our business Gmail account. I'll enter our business name, email address, and then the password twice, and then click Next. Outlook connects to the Gmail service and uses the credentials I entered to log in. I'll click Finish. And now, as you can see, if I scroll down in my folder list, the Gmail account has been added to Outlook. I'll do the same thing again and add the login details for my personal live.com email account. In Outlook 2013, you don't have to install any add-ons to connect to Hotmail or live email accounts. You can also add multiple Exchange email accounts to Outlook 2013, which wasn't possible in previous versions of Outlook. There, now I have access to all my email accounts and I can receive and send emails from all of them without leaving Outlook. If you have a lot of mailboxes, it can help to add the most important folders to your favorites list so that they're easily accessible. To add a folder to your favorites, just right-click the folder and select Show in Favorites. I recommend that you add all inbox folders to your various email accounts to your favorite list. Make sure that your main business email inbox is at the top. In addition to the inbox folder, it's good to add the action folder for your main business account to your favorites list. Rearrange your favorites list so that the action folder is right under your business email account inbox. Your action folder is your most important folder. If you're always looking in your inbox folder, you might lose track of the email you need to action. In addition to adding your action folder to your favorites, you can add more focus to your action folder by showing it every time you open Outlook. To configure Outlook to show your action folder at startup, go to the File tab, click Options, Advanced, and where it says Start Outlook in this folder, click Browse and select your action folder. Click OK and again OK to apply the changes. Now, every time you open up Outlook, you will see the email you need to action. Use this view to keep track of the email you need to follow up on and only go to the inbox when you've scheduled time to do email. 
With the number of email that we as business professionals receive every day, it's easy to get distracted by all the email notifications that pop up on your screen. In order not to lose valuable work time due to distractions, I recommend you turn them off. To turn off the notifications in Outlook, go to the File tab, go to Options and click Mail, and then scroll down to the Message Arrival section. Here I'll uncheck all of the notification options, and then I'll click OK. If you're using Windows 8, Outlook notifications are grouped into the general Windows notifications, so you need to turn them off in Windows. To do this, open up the Charms menu by moving your mouse pointer to the bottom right corner of your screen, or swipe the screen from the right if you have a touch screen. Select Settings, Change PC Settings, Search and Apps, Notifications, and then scroll down to the listed apps and turn off the email notifications. I'll do it for the Windows Mail application as well as for Outlook. Then I'll close the settings by pulling the window down. There, now you can focus your attention on your work. Another way in which you can fine-tune your inbox to save time is to create rules. Rules can take care of email for you if a defined criteria is met. Let me show you an example. I get numerous email every day from the course platform Udemy when a student signs up for one of our courses. I want to keep this information in my archive folder as a reference, but I don't want to manually waste time going through every email. So I'm going to create a rule that does this for me. If you always want to move email from a specific sender to specified folder, you can just right-click the email, click Rules, and choose Always Move Messages From to the specified folder. But in this case, I need to make some adjustments to the rule since I only want to move the email informing me about student enrollments, so I'll click Cancel here. Here, for instance, I have an email from Udemy with a student providing feedback on a course. And this, I want to make sure to read. To create a rule from scratch, I'll mark the email I want to apply the rule to and click Rules on the Home tab. I'll click Create Rule and a window opens up with the different options for this rule. Some fields are pre-populated with information from the email I marked. I'll mark to apply this rule to email coming from Udemy. Then, in the Subject Contains field, I'll remove the text and only keep Just Joined. Since the email I want to apply the rule to contain this text in the Subject field, then I'll select to move the email to my Archive folder. If you want to add even more advanced options to your rules, you can click Advanced Options to open up the Rules Wizard. But for most rules, the options you have available here are enough. I'll click OK to apply the rule, and here I'm given the option to run the rule now on the email in my inbox. I'll mark it, and then click OK. And as you can see, the email from Udemy informing me of students that have just joined have been moved to my archive folder, but the email with other subject lines remain. Quite often, you want to gather email related to a certain topic or from a certain person together so that you can get a quick overview of those email. Since it's not productive to create and manage multiple folders, you can use search folders instead. A search folder isn't a physical folder with email. It's just a filtered view of the email already in your inbox, kind of like a search. You can create search folders for email from specific people or related to a project, partner or customer. Here I have an email from Peter asking me if Aziz signed up to the review of our PowerPoint course. Instead of going to my archive folder and doing a search for Udemy and Aziz, I can just go to my search folder I've created that contains email from Udemy. And here I can quickly see that Aziz has indeed signed up. You can delete search folders without deleting the actual email. To delete a search folder, right-click the folder and delete. I'll get a notification asking me if I want to delete the folder, and I'll click Yes. To create a new search folder, I'll right-click Search Folders and select New Search Folder. Here I can select from a number of predefined criteria, like email from a specific person or email flag for follow-up. 
At the bottom, you can select to create a custom search folder. Click Choose to define your options. Here, I'll name the search folder Udemy, and then click Criteria. In the From field, I'll type Udemy. Now, all email from anyone who has Udemy in their email address will appear in this search folder. I'll click OK multiple times to create my search folder. You can sort your search folder by physical folder so that you can see where the actual email is located. Or, to see the email in the order they arrived, just change the sort order to by date. The great thing about search folders is that you don't have to manually maintain them, they're automatically updated. By following these steps to fine-tune your inbox, I'm sure you'll save a lot of time on email every day.